again and happy new year from Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I am Carla Garrick, and I also too say happy 2024. Oh, yay! Um, we made it to another year. Yeah. That's good. I made it. Uh, I came in a little hot well, and a, snotty. I was too, you know, I had a cold like around Christmas. I really, you know, I'm glad that I'm people I know are back in the mode of like, yeah, I got something, whatever. Right. You know, like, and when I was around people and I was like, I don't think I'm. Like, if I was contagious, everybody I know would have it. So it's interesting because I but did try it. So, so I did have a I fever have a for fever. a couple of days. Um, and it's funny because, like, my base temperature is 94.5 yeah. or something. It's yeah. very yeah. low. So my temperature was, like, 100.4. So you're, like, right, that's a lot. And I was like, that's, like, 104 for right. ordinary <laughs> people. I was like, I think I'm sick. I'm yeah. going to get in bed and, like... I never, even when I'm sick, I'll just kind of potter yeah, around. But I know that fluish stuff. You just but like, I got you know into what? I bed think and, and, and yeah, like, I slept like in the afternoon yeah. for like four hours. Yeah. I never do that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm on the mend. Uh, Louis got it exactly three days after me, which yep. puts the timing. I'm sorry to say, on the Congress critters from Florida and Kentucky because I did a little oh, house meeting yeah. with Thomas Massey and Ron DeSantis. Yeah, and actually, I think somebody else got. I don't remember who. But over, we had to get together this past weekend, and I somebody else was saying they, that somebody got sick, and I was like, because That's Louis what y'all get. didn't go to that, and but you did. I, I did, and then, you brought it and home. then uh, like three mm-hmm. days after that, I got and sick, three and three days, days after yeah. that, he got and sick. And so. I don't remember who, but somebody else did say they got sick of this. So there was a so, super spreader I mean, event, you know, whatever. It's winter. It's, uh, I read a really interesting thing today, which I found kind of depressing because <laughs> New Hampshire is always <clears throat> on all the, we're the best yeah. lists, right? Like oh, we have well, the lowest taxes. We yeah. have the lowest poverty the rate. Freedom. We have the most freedom. Yeah. We're just, New Hampshire is awesome. We sadly also now win the award for having the highest inflation in the nation that rhymes let's make a little rap uh because of the housing shortage yeah i read um mark warden had a whole post today about the housing shortage nothing shocking it it you know you it if you pay attention to things and can do things <laughs> if you're trying to pivot to a new career that might involve selling houses it'll, that's got, it'll, it has to change and i do think um you know you look at like people moving around the country and stuff and it, it, i i still think we're re we're we're in reactionary mode to people who panicked and moved during COVID. Although Dan knows people, I mean, one of Dan's coworkers who currently lives in Utah is, consi- I think it's Utah. No, he lives in Chicago. He's looking at moving to New Hampshire, which we thought was funny. One of Dan's uh, brother's coworkers um, so actually, actually is a free stater looking to move. Nice. Which is just random and weird considering it's not they don't live in New Hampshire. But here's also, <laughs> I think, what happened. You know, sometimes we don't see the work we're doing. Mm in the time space we're in, Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, for me, I've been in New Hampshire now almost 16 years. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you forget. I mean, as it comes up in your memories, you're like, oh, right, I did that, or what was that, or this, right? Uh, So we don't always see the legacy or the work that we've done, right, that has laid the groundwork. But I believe, actually, one of the things that happened during COVID is when the clampdown and the lockdowns Mm -hmm. and the craziness and the mania started happening in a way where an average person it's like wait was like but this does not actually uh work with my own risk profile like right. the government is actually overstepping yeah. its its bounds yeah. here right like in a way that people could viscerally yeah. understand i think people went to google and they were like what's Where the free estate <laughs> right. and, and as they were doing that because of right. the 15 20 years of work i mean the free state project's been around mm. for 20 years uh, there is a a uh, like researchable academic record mm-hmm. of the freedom that we have created in right, New Hampshire. Right, to make us attractive. To make well, it, it so and, that people would and look like and said, go, that yeah, same here. number, you know, from the COVID movers. Let's go with that. And um, you, I, I saw an article recently and I'm like, well, there's no surprise there that more 
dogs are being surrendered to animal shelters or more pets are being surrendered oh. to animal shelters that it's a higher it's a distinctly higher number not just in new hampshire well yeah because everybody thought they needed a dog during covid oh, or a pet during yeah. COVID. and now they have and now two years later they realize this doesn't really work for me right i really right. wasn't a dog person you know and yeah or i have to go back, back to the to office right. and i've created this little monster <clears throat> um, because we bonded over the two years we were locked right. down together and now my now, dog has now, you know and anxiety right. when I leave and now I feel guilty so, so even before the new year so we didn't tape the week of Christmas yep. and then we didn't tape last week because you didn't feel well and I was still in <laughs> because this because I had the plague and I was folks. like yeah we don't need to do that. so anyways I had already saved one article so a couple things on my printer because I just print stuff as I go so then I'm like how do I tie this all together okay I'm gonna go with this no shock to me no it's not gonna be any shock to you Probably not a shock to a lot of the people who watch the show, but so what? It boggles the mind how either, and I'm going to put, I'm not going to presume that it's one of these things. Either a bunch of Democrats are just plain old stupid, <laughs> or a bunch of the Democrats are just awful people, or they are intentionally trying to mislead, or all of the above. There's just like this theme of like, God, do you guys just wake up in the morning and say, what should I lie about today? Because I, I feel like that. I mean, it has really sort of reached a point where it's hard to just say, say well, it's, maybe um, it's just a thing. It's something. It, yeah, I mean, the, the, there, I, I, I see what you're leading into, right? And so the question is, considering the Democrats spend so much time talking about what horrible people the Republicans are, where are these horrible extremist people, right? We don't lie, cheat, and steal anywhere near as much as they do. <laughs> so I printed out a bunch of things. I'm just gonna review a couple of them because we're just... all right. So we'll start so let's with. Let's go back. Let's go back. So, um. Last week was the first uh, days of le the state house legislation. Yep, this I'm already week. behind. Oh my right? goodness! So they were in session uh, Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday and Friday. One of those two days. That's all I remember. All I know is, can I jump in with this? Defend the guard, pass and the house. There was a lot of good stuff that passed the house. Um, now, obviously, we are in a very tight margin house. There's like yes. you know a four vote swing. But, but 20 plus Democrats actually voted with yes. the Republicans to pass Defend the Guard. Yes. And here, anyone who wants to go look, go to my Twitter, go to X, uh, and look on my account. I shared it a couple of days ago. It was one of those remarkable moments where, you know, sometimes you can still glean truth yeah. when people aren't just like fronting or they know this is my talking mm -hmm. point and I must react this way. I am a robot talking, yeah. you know. And it was on Fox and Friends, and they were talking about Defend the Guard coming out of New Hampshire. And the announcer started with, like, kind of, like, dismissive tone in his voice, like, oh, out in New Hampshire, they did this thing. They passed this Defend the Guard that says they have to declare war, a war before they can deploy pe And as he's saying it or reading it, you can tell him, realize, oh, I actually think this is a great idea. Right. And then the two other anchor people in the studio were both like, yeah, this is this totally makes sense. And it was just one of those like little TV moments where, where it didn't go, I think, the way anyone thought it would. And it was just truthful and real. It was three people reacting and saying, why shouldn't people have to declare war? Why shouldn't our elected officials have to declare war if they're going to send our friends and neighbors to die? Like, what? You're just going to do it on the whims? Right, right. Yes, we've been doing it on the whims, and it hasn't been working out. Um. So actually, this was the... S I feel like I'm losing a week somewhere. It had to have been last week. So anyways, this article, this was the article I've had for the longest. Then I'll go on to other ones. But this one cracked me up because I was just like, again, stupid, intentionally misleading, just downright awful. <laughs> <laughs> There's an article that talks about, you know, legislative session opens. Um, there was a bill, House Deputy Speaker Stephen Smith had to cast a deciding vote, which I will say there were quite a few tiebreakers in the mm. last week. Anyways, to kill legislation, which was HB 601, which I printed out, um, to, that would have made low-income families automatically eligible for their children to get free 
school lunches if they are enrolled in Medicaid. And that might sound good on the surface, except the argument against was that it could leave like a $289 million hole in our budget, right? Wow. Well, because- That's a lot of free lunches. Because we all know Sounds that free, right? everybody that's eligible for Medicaid is not within the, people are not destitute and like, the, the the bar for Medicaid is quite high. Let's go with that. So, but the funniest part to me, because I was like, okay, come on. De uh, Rep Representative Mary Heath from Manchester said, studies show that the number of families with insufficient food increased 10% in the past year. That might be the case. I That's mean, uh, given how much groceries cost, I don't but think that is, is pro it, right, untrue. No, right, I'm not, I'm like, okay. But that doesn't mean that everybody should automatically. So no, and also the groceries go up because of inflation. Inflation it's all is caused by circle. monetary policy. Monetary yes. policy is driven by the crazy people who keep demanding free so, stuff. You can't have free stuff. There says, is no such thing as a free lunch. The current process for the school meal applications is cumbersome and account undercounts the number of students eligible for free and reduced school meals. And quite frankly, there are parents for whom the process is just too difficult or daunting, to, which I thought. Yeah, like voting, right? right? Like it's now too hard to show your ID. Well, I, I mean, I'm assuming that all these people, right, all these people <laughs> who can't pass figure out how to apply for free lunch for their children don't vote because that must be as equally complicated but wait so then i looked so what is the process okay for applying for a free and reduced lunch well you well, have well, but wait, you, know what? you Even... literally have to fill out a form okay name list all adults contact information I mean, and your source of it's, like a, a, it's, it's a, a two-page typical government fill in the blocks form it is available on the state website in numerous languages um, you know, Arabic, Bosnian, French, N Nepali, Portuguese, Somali, Vietnamese, Spanish. And if you click on the link, I on demand the page, an Afrikaans well, no, form. I'm sure if you click on the other link that says translated applications, it's on the federal thing in every language you can imagine. Probably. So basically to get free food for your child every school day of the year, you have to write your name on a piece of paper. Well, so, but no, so, so we see this a lot now, right? Where that people is not have, daunting. No, no, but you see this narrative of, oh, that's too hard. No, it's not. People just can't do it. And it's, that is, that is so patriarchal in the truest Like nobody sense can of manage to breathe on their own unless somehow like, the government makes it, a, like, I, I don't like know. Like it's just, it's it's rude. It, it, it is. It, at its very stem, it's almost like that is part of the kernel or that the seed of- That is part of, of systemic of, racism. Yes. Mary Heath feels that people who should be eligible for low and for re, free lunch can't, are incapable of filling out a form. That's what I'm saying. Think about the mentality. So then there's more. So also in that same article, because this one cracked me up. Um, this is on the Senate side. Uh, Assistant Democratic leader Becky Whitley of Hopkinton. Um, they were talking about a House bill from last year to outlaw racial profiling by law enforcement. So... Um, have you seen the skit well, where they're trying to they're use saying they, the, there's the bill would say when somebody when you're putting on a be on a like lookout, an APB when you you're can't saying say, there's, you know somebody robbed the bank he's man tall male white tall male a Caucasian with a black hoodie you could not mention the color of their skin so think about it. Now we're getting mad, we probably can't say whether they're male or female because that's a presumption. So now we're just going to go like this. The bank was robbed by a person in a hoodie. Yes. And and, and the police are somehow supposed While to... also, by the way, making shoplifting illegal. <laughs> so that's crazy, right? So then, wait, let's go on to more crazy. Oh. Um, last week, this past week, um, and I brought this up on my phone because I forgot to print it out. There was a bill to um that passed to kill it okay. we kill, the yeah. house killed a bill um 
HB 619, which would ban sex change surgery for minors. Now, this isn't banning it on adults. This is for minors. And I want to remind people in New Hampshire that even with a parent's permission slip, minors can't use a tanning booth. And can't get a tattoo. So if you think minors shouldn't be able to get a tattoo before they're 18, then you, you definitely should, should not voice cutting, cutting their agree. penis off. That cutting off uh, <laughs> so body parts is this probably is not the a good idea. Of y'all. And I get it. When you're in the House, like, you know, if you vote against right to work as a Republican, we're going to give you crap. You know, that's because it's part of the platform, whatever. If you vote against, you know, certain things, eh, people are going to give you crap. And it works on both sides of the aisle. But we don't take it to the level of violence on the Republican side. I'm going to go with that. So Jonah, um, Wheeler. Jonah Wheeler, who mm. I believe is from Nashua. I'm not sure where his district is, but he he's a is, young, he's young man. Young. He's oh, actually, Peterborough, really? even worse. He's from a very, very, very liberal he's community. He's an impressive he young guy. He is super. He's like 19 years old. Yeah. I have talked to him so many times. So anyways, he gets up there, and in his speech, he says, because these are just terrible things, apparently. The question before us is whether or not children under the age of 18 should be able to get these surgeries. And despite being a liberal who believes in trans rights, I don't think that is the case, Wheeler told his fellow House members. These are irreversible surgeries. This is not a question of whether you're with the trans community or not. It's a question of whether you believe children should be able to get these irreversible sur surgeries. And I'll take the heat that comes from this. Oh, there was heat. So he got out in the anteroom, and apparently it was so loud that everybody in the house chamber was like, what is happening? Uh, I mean, I heard security And got then they had to call the and... state police security because they were afraid that these Democrats were going to physically attack, attack Jonah Wheeler. And then the house clerk had to basically make a deal with Jonah, and he goes, rather than sit in the middle, because they were literally concerned that the Democrats would harm one of their their fellow caucus members, they switched seats so that he could be in the back seat where he would be less likely to be um, attacked physically by his his caucus colleagues. So I mean, what is wrong with people? I, I will tell you what's wrong with people. They're they're they're. Hormones have been dysregulated. Their amygdala, their literal brains do not work properly because of the way we are being conditioned to fear everything and the way we are being fed outrage culture as a steady diet that will destroy your emotional regulation. Like if you're in situations where you can't actually control your yourself and what's coming out of your mouth. You should really stop and uh, you take be, a moment, and, yeah. take a breath, and really consider like where you are in your time um, space. On to next stupid, either dumb or intentionally lying or just an awful person mode. I mean, I might just go evil stupid for today. I don't know. It's uh, hard Joyce to tell. Craig. Um, is no longer mayor oh, of Manchester. Why not both? So um, she had an outgoing thing in the um, New Hampshire Voices in the Union Leader, you know, talking about how, what have, you know, I, fair. But together, we've created opportunities, overcome obstacles, and laid the foundation for Manchester's future. And if by laid the foundation for Manchester's future, she means I am finally got voted out of office so that there is a chance for Manchester's future. I would agree with her. Um but some of these things, I'm like, I don't know. Does anybody buy that we've created 7,000 new family-sustaining jobs? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. um, how about there are, today there are thousands of housing units in development, which might be the case, but they've taken years to get anywhere. So they're still not started. So that's not a, a feather in your cap when you've gotten in the way of development. Um, because the legacy, <sighs> I'm sorry to say here, and this is the problem with zoning and overregulation and everything, is you don't realize the problem <laughs> until it's 15 years later and then it's really hard to steer the ship out of the iceberg. And, and so that is part of the thing. Mm -hmm. They can't be like, well, we fixed it, you know, but it's so, like, but you also caused She it. says, um... They've already brought a 67% reduction in the number of encampments in the last six months alone. I mean, two thirds. Uh, mm, um, I will say that all the camps that I monitor as sort of a walker, a, a, a walker in, in the hood, uh, they most are down. Okay. Um, we've reduced violent crime by 38%. 
That I don't believe. believe. Um, we've ex- oh, this is a big and, one. And can we just talk about this? Uh, maybe we can do this as part of the show and all go do the research. But, you know, the murder rate for New Hampshire came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had an uptick in murders. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think the last number I can clearly remember was there were like 13 in 2020 or something. Yeah. Um, it's it doubled. I mean, it went up. But still 25% of homicides in New Hampshire were police officers who killed New yeah, Hampshire citizens. That is a lot. That is a problem. That is something we should be talking about. Um, so Joyce also says, we expanded local bus service with new routes and increased frequency. Now, nobody ever rides the bus. We all can agree on that. <laughs> um, but what's funny is I see the buses now in Goffstown. Like, I see them in other communities, and I'm like, I don't understand what we're doing, but whatever. Um, We've ensured every student has access to free tutoring services. We wouldn't need tutoring services if we could just teach them to read, right? Um, And increased wraparound services to support students in their overall well-being. But we can't can't teach them to read or write. And very excited about the fact that we've committed to spending an additional $290 million on schools. Um, So she, while her time as mayor is ending, Manchester's future is bright because we've elected a Republican and we have a Republican majority on the uh, the board of mayor and aldermen. She didn't say that. I did. And I can't wait to celebrate my city's wins and our neighbor successes for many years to come after I lose my governor's race. Um, <clears throat> so that was that. <laughs> Moving um, on to I, dumb, I, intentionally misleading, or, or just awful, yeah. uh, Jen, uh, Jean Shaheen. I'm going to go with it. this one at least starts just plainly <coughs> stupid. Lack of Google. Gene Sheen, th- what, but then, because I was had, deleted. I, That's did she what delete yes, Because I we went actually, looking. well, so no, there was a tweet. I there got was, in on that There one. was a tweet, right? And I read it on somebody else's page, and I didn't go over to Twitter, right? So then this morning, I went to find it on Twitter, and I couldn't find it. So then I thought, well, what if it wasn't real? No, so it was real. So then I did find a comment from there somebody with There was a community the note. So Jean Shaheen, and I realize this is not Jean Shaheen. This is her staffer, but sorry, you let your staffer have access to your account, so now it's you, says, quote, a democracy, if you can keep it, quote, said Ben Franklin. January 6th, 2021 was a stark reminder of how just how fragile our democracy is. It is on each and every one of us to never forget the actions that led to the day we so ensure history does not repeat itself. Um, the problem with this is that's not at all what Ben Franklin said, nor was it the tone of what Ben Franklin said. He said, a republic, if you can keep it. That is far different than a democracy. Okay, so maybe we can help folks back home because honestly, I didn't fully understand this when I immigrated. So maybe, you know, just because you guys can't read and write anymore because no one <coughs> teaches you how to do that and in school. And your wraparound services but are getting But your wraparound the services that'll cut your boobies off, that's, <laughs> the, that's working. Here's the thing. A democracy, technically speaking, although people do not like to have it described this way, have. which we do not have we in have America. We have a representative republic. We have a constitutional oh. republic. Yes. What that is in short form is basically all the federalism that we were supposed to have with the competing states, with the electoral college that no one understands, but we know their caucuses and primaries and all these things and all of it happens. And then there's people who collude in the back and they're delegates and it's all come up. That is the constitutional republic. And it exists because it has checks and balances on different arms of the government that's how it's supposed to work even though it's messy and it makes the messiness give all the states an equal footing yes and the messiness is the system because that actually allows say a small state like new hampshire to have some kind of pull or just not to be bullied down into the ground by california and texas and florida right okay so the mess over here is our reality that is how it's supposed to work democracy in its shortest form can be described as one or three things it's mob rule mob rule one man, one vote is the nice, polite way we oh, were taught it. Mob rule. Or you could describe it. It is as two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner or two horny dudes and a lady voting on what's for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh boy. no, the, know. the reality is when you actually see it for what it is, which is that if there were five of us in this room, and three of, and us, three want of us wanted Tammy's blue shirt. Right. 
then you we could just say we can have it. Yeah. Now, clearly, we can all see that that is not really a fair way to run a society because how do we know 51% right. of the people Agreed. were right? Right. 51% plus of people voted for Hitler. Right. On that note, I'm just like, I know we're going to run out of time, right, and I want to get a this, YouTube but on this, strike today, on this, guys. On this note, um, there is a bill that um, Jason Osborne, the House Majority Leader, is the prime sponsor. It's got a bunch of other Keith Hammond, uh, lots of other, um, which this this concept, this is a constitutional amendment. Uh, this constitutional amendment concurrent resolution provides that a two-third vote, not a 50 percent plus one of the House representatives and the Senate shall be required to pass a new tax or license fee or to nice. increase any tax or license fee that has been levied or to authorize the issuance of state bonds. When is so that? They, this uh, has a hearing next week. It is oh. House. It is CACR fifteen. Um, we can talk about that again next. I got week. I got two for Friday. There's yep. CACR twenty. Unpopular, I understand, but it's another swing at independence from the perspective of if the federal debt goes up to forty trillion dollars, then we will take a vote in the Granite State to decide whether we want to stay with that sinking ship or not. The afternoon, another bill, and I forget its number, but also along the same vein, but this one is actually, as the people asked for, it's a study committee. Hmm. So it's starting the conversation of, hey, like how much what's nonsense what's are we gonna take from the federal government? And if we were to decide that we wanted a different future for New Hampshire and for Granite Staters that would involve more peace and prosperity than the federal government can give us at this stage, because it is bank Corrupt, then uh, what would that look like and how would we do it? So we're going to start having those conversations and I invite people to come out on Friday if that is a topic you are interested in. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about real quick, like on the dumb, intentionally <laughs> misleading or just downright evil. Um, for those of you who remember Ray Epps, he was the guy wearing the Trump hat who was telling everybody to go into the Capitol on January 6th that everybody says nobody knows who he was and why he was there. And he seemed to be corralling people and everybody thinks he's, he's a, a federal fed. agent. Anyways, he was um, charged. He was given probation. He got... Um, One year suspended probation. Right? Yeah, it's suspended yeah. probation. Um for his misdemeanor roles. And I did um, go in to Google, like, well, who else went? And I mean, if you punched a cop in the face, I'm not counting you because that's a different- yeah, that's, But that's it, violent. That's, right, that's different. I'm just quickly, um, Suzanne Ianni, she was sentenced to 15 days in prison for disorderly conduct, same thing he was charged with. Um, she was a formerly uh, uh, elected member of the town meeting in Natick and a member of Super Happy Fun America and organizer of a parade. So, like, she went to jail for 15 days for the same things he did. Um, Jared Wake, Wade Hughes was sentenced to three years and 10 months in prison. He was the eighth rioter to enter the Capitol. He climbed through the building through a broken window and helped kick open the Senate's door. He pled guilty, but I'm like three years and 10 months versus suspended probation. Uh, Kevin Seafried was sentenced to three years in prison. He carried a Confederate flag through the Capitol and used the flagpole to, to fend off a police officer. So there's, there. come on. So this guy that we're all pretty sure was a fed just got a slap on the wrist. Everybody else is doing jail time for just simply many people Look, for simply entering I mean, the Capitol. The bottom line is the corruption and the immorality is out in the open. Yep. Open your eyes, see it for what it is, and then decide if you're going to continue to like support these insane, crazy, yeah. gross people, or if you're going to be like, hey, we could do better. Let's try um, something different. And Jay Roy that's was, what I suggest. Jay Ruey was sworn in as mayor. Um, Joe Lavasser was uh, elected as chairman of the board in a tie vote that Jay had to... to vote to break I think we're out, eh? and um we'll come back next week i know um aldermanic meetings will start soon so i'm sure that'll be tons of fun um in the meantime it is 50 degrees out today the snow's all melted carla's a little bit on the mend if you're not feeling well stay home take a nap um and we'll be back next week with more exciting stuff for the 2024 thanks guys uh, bye bye